I love great conversations. Hi, my name is Angel Jones. Thank you for joining me on 12 Minute Convos where I help you create a brand of your own unique real self. Listen in as I have conversations with amazing people from all over the world. Good night, good night, Devinda Gupta. How are you going on this wonderful, beautiful night? I'm doing great, Angel. I'm really happy to be here. Hey, it's a great pleasure to have you, my friend. Uh, tell us, what part of the world are you in right now? I'm in beautiful Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Oh, sweet. And which of your talents is responsible for us connecting at this time? I guess it's recently I've been uh, quite visible uh, in uh, social media. And uh, my message is uh, to remind entrepreneurs to to focus not just on money and becoming a uh, uh, becoming a a big company or a, a a millionaire or a billionaire. The main thing about entrepreneurship is about helping people, what kind of value you're creating. So I've been doing a lot of posts and a lot of articles on that topic lately. Mm. And one of the ways you've been posting as well is one of the ways I love, which is the medium of the podcast, right? Um, tell us about mm-hmm. that, please. Well, I had done podcasts a number of years ago and uh, and then sort of got out of the habit. And uh, earlier this year, I was invited by a colleague of mine to do a series of podcasts to interview women entrepreneurs here in Montreal. And I wasn't too sure if I should be doing that. You know, I'm not a woman, mm-hmm. and so why would they listen to me? Uh, and I had the wonderful opportunity of being teamed up with Donna Saker, who is a radio personality here in Montreal. And she put me immediately at ease. And we created this, this wonderful chemistry between Donna and myself. And I think it's because we both agree that it's not about the business, it's about the person. Mm. So we had 10 wonderful conversations with women uh, of all types, professional, mothers, single, young, um, more mature. And, uh, but I was just struck by their desire not only to to help themselves be better people but also their their generosity and their their passion to make the world a better place around them hmm. yeah that's an amazing project i love when people take embarked embark on projects uh, like that i'm glad that you went with your gut <laughs> right and got that i mean how do you feel now that you've done it it's it is a lot of fun and it's given me a lot of um, confidence also to be able to take this message to men hmm. and and I really believe that we need to have more of a of a balance of yin and yang in uh, in entrepreneurship and uh, my my entrepreneurship background is a lot in technology so of course there's a lot of young hard charging we'll do it at any cost type. But then I've seen the costs and also back in my background, uh, this would be about uh, 25 years ago, I experienced also the uh, company, a startup that I was a part of blowing up and it uh, it had a big cost financially, but especially to my soul. And that's why I moved away from being in technology and more towards leadership coaching, Mm -hmm. which I've been doing for the last 17 years. So yeah, we need more of that yin and yang together. Yeah, love that, love that. So now that you've started that and you did get through those conversations, are you going to continue to repeat that skill of um, bringing the message via the podcast medium? Very much so. And uh, what's what's nice about uh, this project too is that it's uh, supported by a major media company here in Montreal. So it's uh, it's promoted. Uh, and it's promoted on the radio and there's a there's a bit of a budget behind it which is a lot of fun too yeah, wow. which allows us to do things yeah so it's it's a different type of podcast but it's got my passion back to do these kinds of conversations mm, love it love it well tell us one other thing that you've done consistently did we see the name of the project again it's inspiration incorporated inspiration inc um, you could definitely pick that up on iTunes yes. or anywhere podcasts yes. are available, right? Well, tell us one other thing that you've done consistently over the last three years. Over the past three years, I've been reinventing myself. I've been in a transition, and it started with the passing of my mother 
in in uh, or just over two years ago now, uh, which really gave me an opportunity to to examine what I'm doing in my life, and uh, do I like what I'm doing? Is it time to change? And it gave me an opportunity. The what I received in, in for, as a gift from her gave me the freedom to go back to school, to go back and, and explore other ideas and to travel a little bit. And uh, so that's what I've been doing is I've been taking the last couple of years very much as a sabbatical, uh, which has allowed me to explore, to think, to write. I'm working on a book that I'm hoping to publish next year uh, about let's get back to the fundamentals of business and, uh, and that business is about an exchange between, between people, an exchange of value. And so building up a philosophy of business based on that. Isn't it fascinating that things have been put in place for you to do what you're doing now? <laughs> and secondly, how does it make you feel? Very grateful, very grateful, because I know that it's a special gift uh, that was uh, that was bequeathed to me. I'm uh, and I and I think about my mother a lot. And I ask myself, is this something that she would have she would be proud of? Uh, she's a survivor of the Second World War in Europe. Wow! And uh, came to Canada. So, yes. Yeah, so she, uh, when she was very young, she experienced a hardship, um, famine. She lost all her teeth at the at the age I think was about eleven or twelve years old. And uh, and then immigrated to Canada after the war and rebuilt her life. And my dad also was an was an immigrant from India, and he rebuilt his life here. And so, uh, at being the son of two immigrants who built a life from nothing, uh, I'm very privileged to be able to to stand on what they've given me and now give back to others in a big way too through my coaching, through my writing, and through my inspiration. I hope. Hmm. Where's the best place for someone to connect with you and your path um, to follow what you're doing or even just to connect with you, as I said? I'm, I'm quite active on uh, LinkedIn and also on Facebook. And so if you type in my name, Devender Gupta or Coach Devender, you'll most likely find me. There aren't too many people with, uh, with my <laughs> name and especially in, in Quebec. <laughs> <laughs> And so, so yeah, and and that's I invite people to reach out that way. Wonderful. Well, the vendor, let's switch gears for a moment now, and let me invite you into my time machine that is surrounded with beautiful, warm blue Caribbean water. Vendor, what is your earliest childhood memory? <laughs> I was thinking about that. Uh, when I was really young, I was born in Dallas, Texas. And I think it was the first time I saw snow. I might have been about two years old or something like that. And the way I saw it is there was a big car accident in front of our house where a car hit a fire hydrant. And there was water all over the place. And so I thought, this is really neat. Snow, <laughs> car accident, water gushing all over the place. Uh, it's uh, I have I have fond memories of my of <laughs> my early years. <laughs> uh, yeah, you got the full show, right? <laughs> yeah, and then after that, we uh, we moved as a family to Mont to Montreal and to Quebec City, where we get three meters every winter, three meters of snow. Oh, so snow is a big part of my life. <laughs> you love it. You love the snow, right? <laughs> Very much. Yes. So why do you think this memory is so clear? And can you connect it to the memory uh, specifically to who you are right now or what you do? I think it was the, um, the immediacy of the moment. Um, things are happening. People are being who they are. Uh, and, um, and it was also something different. I like different things learning different things, seeing different things, experiencing different things. So it was sort of like, yeah, I think that's why it stuck in my memory that it was that it was something not yeah, it was dramatic. There was a story around it. Yeah, let's put it that way. There was a story around it. Okay. Well, can I offer an interpretation to the thought picture you created in my mind? Okay. I love the idea. All right, no, let me not say I love the idea. Ah, that's a habit, that, right? <laughs> but it's intriguing to me. Um, you know, when you when you shared uh, that your mother passed, it was intriguing mm -hmm. to me how how death can be perceived. Um, 
Uh, mm-hmm. Definitely, it is saddening, and um, do accept my condolences. But it seems that it's something that helped to get you to move to the next step. And yes. I love that in the memory, the thing that could have been perceived as tragic, which is the car um, hitting the, the fire hydrant, was something that created abundance. And I'm connecting the dots to your yeah. tragedy with your mother and her death, but the abundance that was created. And the one thing that has allowed all of that to be possible is your perception of that and the decision you made going forward, wow. which is so important. Wow. Thank you, Angel. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm grinning from ear to ear. Oh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> that is great. If we fast forward to when you were 12 years old, what was your favorite song? Wow. Um, I'm in Quebec, and at that time, this was be the mid-70s, there was a band called Harmonium, uh, and they had a song called Pour un instant, For a Moment. Mm. And uh, Harmonium is one of Quebec's... Uh, iconic bands and the song is all about stepping out for a moment letting go of the name of the labels i give myself letting go of looking at the mirror and just interpreting what i see so turning the mirror around and allowing myself to see who i really am hmm. and amazing. even now i love that song even now i play from time to time just to just to ground myself hmm. pour un instant that's amazing wow that's am- i mean just like in that image in that memory just for that moment uh in terms yeah. of what you experience with the picture of the water right just <laughs> yeah. for a, a moment just for a moment it's amazing how these things connect so i'm intrigued and i'm on the yes. other side of the world right it's just <laughs> i'm not too far but i'm right there right so it's just intriguing yeah. my friend all right well we've arrived at our destination but before we get off of this time machine there is a small declaration form so it's yes or no possibly a bit more we are going to move pretty quickly here are you ready davinda i'm ready davinda have you chosen someone to pass on your skills to still looking are you married no do you have children no do you believe in god yes do you have an inner circle of friends very much so do you watch tv for more than three hours a day no how about three hours a week yes i have my favorite shows <laughs> <laughs> and what about screen time the phone under the computer is it more than eight or less than eight hours a day oh uh, way way too much i need new glasses <laughs> <laughs> I know the feeling. Well, Devinda, hey, after a thousand one conversations, I came up with this concept of your own unique real statement, right? Yours. If you had to share with us your own unique real statement, a statement that represents Devinda Gupta, what would you say that is? Is what you're doing now creating the future that you really want? Hmm. Love it. Devinda, this was a great pleasure. Before you leave, is there anything else you'd like to share with our amazing audience? Thank you, Angel, for sharing this time with me. It's time is precious. We need to make the most of it. And I really feel blessed that uh, we were able to uh, converse today. I thank feel you. blessed as well, my friend. You are welcome and thank you for being here. Devinda Gupta, thank you for being on What is Inspired by 12 Minute Convos with Angel Jones. Thank you for being on 12 Minute Convos with Angel Jones. Stay tuned for more from our advertisers. Diabetes is a mountain pandemic. It's a disease that's not acute, but chronic. Similar to this rhyming method, I have simplified the definition, the signs and symptoms, and the complications of diabetes for both adults and children in my books, Poems for Patients, A Focus on Diabetes, and The ABCs of Diabetes for Children. These books are available on Amazon.com, and for more information, you can visit my website, poemsbyag.com that's poemsbyag.com